This is The Herd, wherever you may be, and however you may be listening. Live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1, Christine Leahy is joining me for Hour 2. I have a major announcement to make. Is it happening now? Do you want to do it right now? Uh, yeah. Does it have something to do with James Harden? This is I'm going to get into a James Harden topic in a second. Okay. So I'm just going to make an announcement. Tonight, for the first time in my life, I am going to WWE SmackDown Live at the Staples Center. Wow. Breaking news. I am Is going. Is it going to be safe for you there? Well, I am you a celebrity. You have been so kind. I have been critical of some of the fans, not the wrestlers. Wrestlers right. are real athletes. I have been critical through the years of a handful of wrestling fans, which I called booger eaters. Well, you will be sitting next to those people, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, I'll be sitting up front, so hopefully they won't see me. Oh, they'll appreciate that. Yeah. So I am going um, to, I was invited to go to WWE uh, Lunchbox Live, or what is it called? Sm uh, Lunchbox Live? Sm Smackdown Live. And I will be sitting very close to the ring, and I will have a report tomorrow on all the festivities. It is incredibly athletic. I want to get a sneak peek. I was invited by somebody. I think it's important. I had uh, Jim Ross on, so I am going to this event tonight. And and considering um, – no, I'll just stop there. I'm just going to go to the event tonight. You know those last a few hours, right? You can't like stick around for ten minutes and then go home. I thought that was you like you can't pull your usual. So there's thing. more than one match. I thought you go in like Hulk Hogan is wrestling The Rock, Andre the Giant. Is this the music they play? So there's a bunch of them. How many? I don't watch much anymore, but I think those shows are two or three hours. Are huh. you gonna have a beer? I am going to, I'll just say this. I'm going to enjoy the festivities. I'm all in. It's okay. an incredible business. I'll say that. It's an incredible business. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go tonight for that. What's going to be more, cocktails consumed by you or dumped on you by other fans? <laughs> That's a good First one. of all, I poked a handful of fans, WWE, in the ribs. Uh, bygones I... can be bygones. There's no reason for animosity. We're all in the same theater enjoying this majestic event. I think some of them might enjoy Spilling a cocktail or two on you. Anyway. Or throwing their boogers so that's the, at you. That's the major announcement on the show. First time in my life, WWE SmackDown Live. I will be have a good seat, and I'm going to watch it. Who's wrestling tonight? Um, uh, Morty, the contractor, and uh, Larry, uh, the pigeon-toed uh, sleeper-hold investment banker. Oh. Yeah. Sounds entertaining. Okay. All right, can I start with this? I'm hearing everybody complain about officials. LeBron's complaining about officials. And Paul George last night's complaining, quote, we get officiated differently. And Westbrook, if you watch him, complains about everything. Everybody, even Steve Kerr's talking about the Do we have the Steve Kerr bite? Steve Kerr, coach of the Warriors. Everybody's complaining about the officials. Here's Steve Kerr yesterday. 20 years ago, I mean, you were allowed to literally smack the shooter on the hand, and the, if it was after the release, it didn't matter, you know, and you could run into the guy, and you had Reggie Miller kicking people, and the refs didn't know who was fouling whom, and, and nobody ever called anything, and now um, there is a huge emphasis on protecting shooters. The players test the boundaries every single night, and they try to fool the refs. The one that you see all the time now is a, a player's dribbling with one hand, the guy, you can try to get your, you know, arm in f to defend him, and the player uses the off arm to literally grab the defender and then flail and look like he's shooting the ball. But good luck trying to officiate that <laughs> at full speed. I don't, I don't know who's right, who's wrong. I just know I wouldn't want to be a ref. You know what this feels like to me? Animosity and jealousy of James Harden of Houston, who gets 28 percent of his points at the free throw line. LeBron, there is a reason. Westbrook, there is a reason. Paul George, I love you, bro, but there is a reason you're not at the free throw line like James Harden. Because James Harden flails and sells his calls and is unorthodox and left-handed and has a herky-jerky start-and-stop motion. He gets to the free throw line because he is in uniquely difficult to defend. Two players in my life have scored a ton of their points at the free throw line. Carl Malone, Utah Jazz, 
and James Harden Houston. Do you really want me to believe that the NBA officials decided we want to take this guy in the mountains in Utah, not Dr. J, not Michael Jordan, not Larry Bird, not Magic Johns. Not, we want to take this guy in small market Houston and just put him at the free throw line. And then they decide 20 years later, we want to get, take this guy, this left-handed guy in Houston with a beard, and we want to just put him at the free throw line. No, Carl Malone deserves credit for getting there. James Harden gets to the free throw line because he earns it. He's chunky. He's a lefty. He flails. He's clever. He's unorthodox. He starts and stops. This feels like a lot of animosity toward James Harden, who is the hands down, I know LeBron's 1A, MVP this year. 28% of his points at the free throw line. Where it, it, everybody's complaining they're not getting this. Hey, let me throw something else at you. There's an old baseball player named Rod Carew. Rod Carew was the best pure hitter I ever saw along with Tony Gwynn, the late Tony Gwynn. Rod Carew never saw a called third strike, meaning the umpires respected Rod Carew so much, if Rod didn't swing on it, they didn't punch him out. They didn't strike him out. They knew that Rod knew his strikeout zone. He knew his zone better than the umpire did. So Rod Carew rarely saw a called third strike. Let me just throw this at you, and you're going to think this is unfair, but referees are human. That James Harden is one of the best shooting guards in my lifetime, and that referees know this. He's a pure shooter. I mean, he, he can literally sit at the free throw line or on three-point line and hit 28 out of 29 shots. Westbrook is not. Westbrook is more dynamic athletically. But the officials subconsciously believe that if James Harden, if you don't call the foul when it's close, they feel like they're taking points away from him because he's a great shooter who would make the shot. Referees feel like with Westbrook, he wouldn't make it anyway. He's not a very good shooter. I do think part of the equation why Westbrook doesn't get the calls and Harden does. Now, a lot of it's because the way they play the game. I mean, very, I mean, Westbrook was 100 miles an hour to the basket. Harden to start, stop, hurt, jerk, left-handed. He's got you off balance constantly. But I also think a component here is the Rod Carew factor, is that referees feel like, Harden is so gifted as a shooter that if you don't call the borderline call, you're taking points away from him. With Westbrook, they don't feel the shot would have gone in any way. The guy shot 26% in his last three games. So he's the Tasmanian devil, Westbrook. He's going 1,000 miles an hour. It wouldn't go in anyway. And I think there's a subconscious level working. But everybody now is complaining about free throws and lack thereof. Carl Malone and James Harden were uniquely built and designed and, and featured parts of their components to their game, which got them to the free throw line. Give them credit. Give Harden credit. He's got a weird style that is impossible not to make contact with. And man, does he sell it to the refs. Let me throw this out there as well. Reggie Bush this hour, NFL Combine starting up. I want to throw some numbers up with Lonzo Ball. I've always felt Lonzo Ball had three things working against him. His dad's a loudmouth. He's a Laker. I mean, you know, a lot of people just want to hate the prestigious franchises. The Yankees, Real Madrid, Duke basketball. So his dad's not very likable to a lot of people. He's a Laker. And the expectations, you know, Magic Johnson's got him in the Hall of Fame before he plays a game. But look at his first 23 games, and I've, I've said this for years. When a kid breaks into the NBA, the NBA game is so much faster than college basketball. you got to give a kid two to three months to just get up to speed to the NBA game. Lonzo was over his head. The game was way too fast. But in the last 15 games, Lonzo Ball's really good. 13 a game, 44%, 40% three-pointers. One of the better plus minuses on the Lakers. The reason I didn't believe Lonzo Ball was a bust, I took out the fact that his dad's a loudmouth, he was a Laker, and I removed the expectations. 
He has four or five things going for him, which you can't deny. First of all, he's a six, five and a half point guard. You cannot teach that. And he not only is long, but he uses his length very wisely. Secondly, he does have exceptional court vision. It's almost like Wayne Gretzky in hockey. He can see things develop a tick before other players can. I'm not sure you can teach that. Number three is, some people say he's too stoic. I would argue I don't want my point guard and my CEO yelling at people. He has got a very suppressed demeanor. He's never too high. He's never too low. He has an incredibly chill personality. I don't see it as a weakness necessarily. I think for a CEO, quarterback, and point guard, it may work to his advantage. Here's the other thing. Players like playing with him. You've gone to the Y. You've played basketball. High school, college, AAU, YMCA. Most guys go to the gym and don't pass. You could argue Lonzo is too pass first. Players like playing with Lonzo Ball. The Lakers are better when they play with Lonzo Ball. Not every basketball player, including Michael Jordan and Kobe, are fun to play with. They're not. Often the better the player, the more he shoots, the bigger the ego, the less fun he is to play with. So, listen, I don't think Lonzo has the athletic ability. He is not dynamic enough to be a superstar. But the kid can play. In his last 15 games, the numbers are real. The Lakers are good with him. He scores. He can shoot. He rebounds. And he sees the court. He's long. And guys in the league like playing with him. Here's a question. When was the last time you said, man, do I love my underwear? I'm just going to speak for guys here. We never say that. Maybe other people do. I rarely talk about my underwear. Then You I... talk about your underwear a lot now. Now, because I have Tommy John, which very, very good point. Three years ago, I started wearing Tommy John. Uh, have it on right now. Wife wore it last night. Tommy John is unique, lightweight, breathable fabric. I'm not really an underwear guy. I've said before, I like space. I don't like to be in clubs. I don't like to have uh, watches. I don't like, I was never really an underwear guy until Tommy John. Undershirts, socks, doesn't shrink, no wedgies. Go to TommyJohn.com right now. If you use the promo code HERD, 20% off on your first order. Not the cheapest, it's the best. TommyJohn.com, code HERD.